His Excellency, Mr. Yves Sahinguvu, Deputy Head of State of Burundi. Your Excellency, Mr. Yves Sahinguvu, you have the floor. Excellence, uh, Madame la Présidente. Madam President. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor for me to take the floor before this august body at this time when all of Earth's inhabitants are holding their breath, expecting us to sign a binding legal instrument to reduce greenhouse gases responsible for extreme climatic variations. At the outset, I would like to thank the government and the people of the Kingdom of Denmark for the welcome and the hospitality that we have been shown with our whole delegation since our arrival in the beautiful city of Copenhagen. Madam President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is no longer a secret for anybody that climate change endangers lives and has shown its ability to wipe out the hard-won progress made in the field of development. Things go from bad to worse when climatic variations are combined with structural vulnerabilities in the least developed countries. My country, Burundi, is at the stage of post-conflict. It is very vulnerable, and its demographic situation leads to over-exploitation of natural resources. The country is hit on all fronts by climate change, which involves prolonged droughts, and floods, leading frequently to the disturbance of crop growing seasons and the destruction of infrastructure. The country is seeking to reconstruct and wishes to return to its image of a green paradise where only new and renewable energies would be used. Thus, an intensive reforestation policy is now being implemented with a particular focus on fruit trees in order to combat hunger at the same time as protecting the environment. In its vision to 2025, Burundi focuses on sustainable development based on a green economy as a priority, granting differential advantages to promoters of green investments. Burundi already has a national action plan for adaptation to climate change and national communication documents on climate change in which the vulnerability of socio-economic sectors such as agriculture, energy, health, water resources and ecosystems is emphasized. Priority activities for adaptation to climate change have been established and translated into tangible projects. Options to mitigate anthropogenic emissions of greenhouse gases, capacity building and technology transfer needs have been identified. However, the financial and material resources to implement the tangible actions proposed to adapt to climate change and apply technologies that emit less greenhouse gases are lacking despite the government's commitment and goodwill. From this rostrum, we call upon the developed countries as partners to make available the necessary resources to support this program and do this in addition to overseas development aid. Madam President, 
This conference is an opportunity for our respective governments to redefine our policies in order to safeguard the harmony between mankind and nature. Burundi encourages supports and fully adheres to all initial international initiatives that seek to implement this objective. In particular, we're thinking of a joint international fund for clean enterprises whose main objective would be to finance non-polluting projects and programs, particularly in Africa, which, although far from being one of the main producers of pollution, is nevertheless the primary victim. In view of the serious challenges and the severity of the situation, <coughs> there is no more time to be lost. We must immediately move to action by adopting today a legal instrument that has everybody on board and through which clear commitments from all parties must immediately be translated into tangible specific actions. This Copenhagen conference must lead to an ambitious, inclusive, effective, and equitable climate agreement which is favorable to eradication of poverty, sustainable development, and which takes into account the gender dimension. Likewise, since the future of all humanity is at stake here, Vigorous, transparent follow-up and assessment mechanisms must be discussed and adopted by this assembly. Madam President, Burundi calls for vulnerable countries in general and post-conflict countries in particular to be specially supported financially and technically in the effective implementation of tangible adaptation and mitigation actions. Long live international solidarity. I thank you. I thank His Excellency, Mr. Yves Sahin-Gubu, for his statement.